Derry City keep the title race alive with a dramatic injury time winner against Waterford. Last Friday, it was also a must-win situation against St. Pat's and Derry came through by a single goal. But the destiny of the title is still in Shelburne's hands despite Friday's defeat in Cork. But first to tonight's all-important Premier Division game between Waterford United and Derry City at the RSC. Stephen Kenny's side needed to win to go level on points with Shelburne and they were handed a great opportunity to take the lead on the half hour when referee Paul Chewis decided that Gary Beckett had been taken down in the box. A debatable decision which certainly had the Waterford players complaining. Up stepped Mark Farron but his spot kick was saved by Ben Spicer diving to his right hand side. Waterford had a late penalty appeal turned down when Clive Delaney appeared to drag down Daryl Kavanagh. And within a matter of seconds at the opposite end, Derry scored the game's only goal. Mark Farron with an injury time winner, which proved to be virtually the last kick of the game. Derry are now level on points with Shelburne at the top of the table. Shells have one and possibly two games to play against Bohemians, while Derry definitely only have one more match at home to Cork City on Friday night. Yeah, we did leave it late, and uh, there's no doubt about that. I think, uh, you know, two and a half weeks ago, we were ten points behind, and uh, we've, we've drawn level tonight. And we've had two difficult games away to uh, St. Pat's and Inchicore, and down here in, in the RSC in Waterford. And we've won the two of them, you know, 1 0. Tremendous wins for us, tremendous away wins. And to come from 10 points behind to level it gives us a chance going into the last game and, you know, in the last, last day of the season. So, uh, you know, the players have shown tremendous um, effort to keep going with a game every three days for the last 10 weeks, literally. And, uh, you know, I can't praise them highly enough. Yeah, yeah, awful, but um, that's what happens when you're at the bottom of the league at times, nothing goes for you. Fair play to Derry, they kept going to the end, and they obviously have their eyes on Friday night and hopefully win the title for them. But I, I, look, at this stage of our season, it's all about performance now, and I have to say I'm 100% proud of every one of my players. They were absolutely superb tonight against a, a full-time outfit and a very good team at that. I thought our boys were a credit to the club. We have to recover now. It's a you know six-and-a-half-hour trip now back to Derry, and uh, we've got to make sure that we... Uh, you know, we recover properly and, and that we get ready for Friday with Cork and the Brandywell, which is another tough game for us. And Derry City knew the pressure was also on ahead of Friday night's game away to St. Pat's, but it proved to be another good night for the Candy Stripes. It was a huge night at Richmond Park as Derry sought to keep the title race alive. As if that wasn't enough, Stephen Kenny had confirmed his departure to take over at Dunfermline, while the game also acted as a dress rehearsal for the FAI Carlsberg Cup final. Ten minutes in, Pats came close to grabbing the lead. Peter Hutton miskicked as he attempted to clear Mark Quigley's cross, but for Eddie McCallion's intervention at the back post, Sean O'Connor could have put the hosts one up. From the resulting corner kick, Johnny McDonald's side were handed an even better chance to hit the front. Clive Delaney, making his first start of the season, brought down Saints captain Cullum Foley in the box and the penalty was awarded. Big moments call for big players to stand up and be counted. And that's exactly what David Ford did, brilliantly turning away Michael Foley's effort. Ford was called into the action again a minute later. This time he made a far more comfortable save from Sean O'Connor's drive. The visitors had to wait 18 minutes for their first shot on target. Sean Hargan found himself in space at the edge of the Pats area and Barry Ryan had to go full length to keep out the fullback shot. Four minutes later, the host missed another gilt-edged opportunity. Mark Rooney didn't give up the chase as Peter Hutton attempted to shepherd the ball out for a goal kick. His persistence paid off and he squared for Trevor Malloy, who doesn't need anyone to tell him he should have scored. At the other end, Barry Ryan was equal to anything thrown his way. This time he denied Mark Farron, who had got on the end of Gary Beckett's clever flick on. 
into the second half and Derry started the brighter. Stephen Kenny introduced Pat McCourt as the Candy Stripes search for the all-important breakthrough and it had the desired effect. He slalomed his way down the right side of the host defence before crossing for Mark Farron who made no mistake from close range. But Pats were not about to give up and they went very close through Keith Fahey on this occasion. Shortly afterwards, Derry should have wrapped up the points. Mark Farron wasn't closed down on the right wing and sent over a pinpoint accurate cross to strike partner Gary Beckett. Only he'll know how he managed to miss from such close range. And Derry weren't finished there. Pat McCord exchanged passes with Farron, and this time it was the post that came to Pat's rescue. With time almost up, Derry were nearly made to pay dearly for those misses. Cullum Foley rose highest to head home from the in-swinging free kick, but the referee's whistle cut the celebration short as he had spotted an infringement in the area and gave the free kick. So Mark Farron's goal proved to be enough in the end for the visitors. 1-0 was how it finished. It was a tough game for us, you know. Um, we are disappointed to lose on Tuesday against Rada. Um, and tonight was... The conditions were difficult, you know, it was lashing rain, it was a heavy pitch, um, with a few injuries, you know, which is inevitable with the run we've had. We've had a game every three days for the last nine weeks, and um, the players have been absolutely tremendous. Probably could have been training up at half time, missed the penalty, missed two good chances. Uh, second half, wasn't much in it between the two teams. Uh, Paddy McCart, come on, done a little bit of magic, he got the goal. We've no chances, with a good chance at the end, disallowed a goal for what reason, we don't know. Uh, there wasn't much in the game, it was a scrappy game, but uh, happy enough for what we, we, we were trying to achieve tonight. But obviously, you were home, we, we lost the game. I wouldn't be too fearful, you know, we're not that far off them. Well, Paul, last Tuesday night when Shelburne won and Derry City lost, the gap was six points. It's now back to level points. Great win for Derry City tonight against Waterford. We saw the, the pictures. Very, very late winner, but three more crucial points for Derry tonight. Absolutely, Dave. Um, four minutes into injury time, you know, they, they kept going till the very end. Possibly could have had a penalty given against them just before they scored. Didn't, it wasn't given, and sometimes that's just the things that you need when you're going for a, a title. They, they took advantage of it and, and scored and won 1-0. And, you know, they're back level with, with shells now, so... It's all, it's all still to play for. I'm just beginning to wonder, I mean, are Derry now getting all the breaks? I mean, we saw again on Friday night, it was a great save by, by Ford, but they, they conceded a penalty. There could have been a goal down there, and, and, and they went on to win that game. Well, I mean, throughout the course of the season, I'm sure there have been games where Derry lost or dropped points when they probably felt they, they should have won. I think throughout the course of the season, it, it, it evens itself out, you know. Some weeks you play well, you don't get your rewards. Other weeks you, you're a little bit lucky, but you know it, it's gone. To, it's going to the last week, and it's, it's it's great to see it going to the last week. It's important as well now, isn't it? When it comes to the end of the season, especially Stephen Kenny mentioned that it's raining, the pitches are heavy. You defend properly, you keep clean sheets, and you always have a chance. In the shows against Waterford, they kept the clean sheet, and albeit they got the goal in the last few minutes, but they still got the three points, mm -hmm. and that's the most important thing now. Paul, you were at the game on Friday night at Richmond Park. You can talk us through the the main incidents now. Yeah, it was a strange game. Um, Pats, Pats were very good in the first, the first 20 minutes or so and um, really should have gone ahead. Uh, Clive Delaney, he's, he's a good defender, Clive. He's missed a lot of football this year and he was, he, he was very poor there for that. I mean, Colin Foley sent a half. He shouldn't be let, allowing him to turn in the box. It gave Pats a great opportunity to go ahead in the game. And, you know, if they, if, if they had gone ahead, you know, it may well have been a different game. But, unfortunately, it's a good save by Ford. Nice height for the keeper. And, really... Derry didn't look like a side who were, who were going for the title in the first half. In the second half, they picked it up a little bit, and the court came on, and we all know what he's capable of doing. And just one bit of, I mean, that must be a nightmare for the defender when you see Paddy McCourt running at you like that. And Mark Farron, who didn't have an awful lot of opportunities in the game, but the good striker he is, he's always loyal to score. And you can't see here off him, but he makes a great run across from the back post to get in in front of Frost. He's unlucky, came across covering him well. But, you know, Farron, he's the kind of fella that you have to watch him for 90 minutes because his, his movement is excellent and he's a great finisher. I think Pats were very, very unfortunate here. We can see in the replay, Colin Foley scores the goal. No, no, there's no, he didn't commit a foul on anybody. I think the referee in the position he was in saw a push by a, another Pats player. On another day, you know, he would have let it go. Unfortunately for Pats, he saw it. His hair didn't get in his eyes anyway. 
And, that was uh, a definite foul, Paul. It was a foul, yeah, but I mean, he, 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 he was right to give to disallow the goal, but the point I'm making is that the player who scored the goal didn't commit any foul. Think about Delhi as well, like, physically, they must be knackered. They've got to be really tired now. I mean, they've had so many games, and I know what you're saying, they're not playing well, but they're still winning. You know what I mean? I think it's hard but they can't to be keep performing. Level, you know. I oh, know, but like the thing is, performances have definitely dipped on them. Mm. They, they haven't, haven't been, they haven't played. Shells haven't played well either in the last few weeks. No, that's true. That's you a know, fair point. I, I think. But I think Delhi more so the games they've had. Whatever Shells, a difference is. I don't think they've had nowhere near as many games as Delhi have had. They've we'll, been playing we'll in two weeks. We'll talk about week. the, the situation obviously regarding Stephen Kenny in a moment. I know mm. it's it's obviously a, a big <clears> talking <throat> point. But uh, just 